Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep back here to talk to you about line integrals involving flux. So if we have some path, some curve through space that is represented as r equals some vector x comma y, then if we look at a vector and call it n and we define that to be y prime negative x prime, that's going to be normal to this original curve, this original path, and it's going to point to the right as we travel along the curve. So you think about traveling along the curve c here, our tangent direction obviously is straightforward as we're traveling along. And this normal direction to the right here, the formula for it is going to be y prime comma negative x prime. If we're traveling counterclockwise along a closed curve like a circle or an ellipse, that would mean that our vector n here is actually pointing normal, but it's also pointing directly outside of the curve. We're going to go ahead and define flux here as the measure of flow through a curve. So our formula for this flow is going to be the line integral over this curve of f dot, not t hat anymore, which was circulation, but n hat, the normal amount of flow through the curve. So remember a couple of things about n hat, right? n hat is a unit vector, but it's going to be this normal vector that's pointing to the right as we go around the curve, divided by its own length, since it's a unit vector. And remember that ds is the magnitude of r prime of t dt from arc length. If we take both of these expressions and plug them into our integral, then we get something that looks like this. You may notice by looking at this, the magnitude of n of t is the same as the magnitude of r prime of t. So that will give us a nice expression of f dot n dt. And there are other ways to see this. Remember, we can think of our vector field f as some vector m comma n. And if our n vector here was y prime comma negative x prime, if you recall from the beginning, then that would make this dy dt comma negative dx dt. So putting that all together, our differential form for flux is going to be the integral over the curve of m dy minus n dx. This is our differential form, much like we did our differential form when we did circulation line integrals. All right, so I've got my formula up here. We're going to calculate the flux of the field x comma y across the circle of radius 3 centered at the origin oriented counterclockwise. So our path that we're going to travel our r of t, if we are traveling counterclockwise around a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin, then that parameterization is going to look like 3 cosine of t, comma 3 sine of t. So we'll let t go from 0 to 2 pi. So there's our parameterization for our curve. Now remember the same way we did with line integrals and circulation, we think about this parameterization tells us what x is and it tells us what y is. And our field over here we think of as m comma n, right? So I know what m and n are and I know what x and y are. So I should be able to develop everything of m dy minus n dx for my integral from this information here. So let's go ahead and write all this down. So if m is equal to x, and I know from my parameterization that x is 3 cosine of t, then m is 3 cosine of t, and if n is y, y from our parameterization is 3 sine of t, so that makes n 3 sine of t. Now if I have x and y, I should also be able to get this dy and dx stuff, right? So if x is 3 cosine t, then dx is negative 3 sine t dt. And if y is 3 sine t, then that makes dy 3 cosine of t dt. So now let's just take all of this mn dx dy stuff, let's plug all that in to our integral, right? So our flux is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, our t bounds, right? 0 to 2 pi. And then m dy, so that's 3 cosine t times 3 cosine t dt. So that will actually give us 9 cosine squared t. All right, then we have minus n dx, so n is 3 sine t, and dx is negative 3 sine t, so that would be a negative 9 sine squared t, but we have minus, right? So that's going to actually change that to plus 9 sine squared of t, and again, both those terms have a dt in it, so I'm just going to factor it out and write it at the end like we usually see for integrals. Okay, so we're going to integrate this 
from 0 to 2 pi dt. Now you probably notice here that this is actually 9 times the Pythagorean identity cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which we should know is 1, right? So 9 times 1 is just going to give us the integral of 9 in there, all right? And that's a real easy integral to do, right? So the antiderivative of 9 is 9t, and we'll plug in our bounds from 0 to 2 pi. Plugging in 2 pi times 9 will give us 18 pi. Plugging in 0 will give us 0. So we get flux is 18 pi for this example here. So if you look at our curve here and our vector field sort of on top of each other in one picture, we get an idea of why the flux is a positive 18 pi. So you think about if we're traveling counterclockwise around this curve, just think at this point, as I'm traveling this direction on the curve, the vector field is flowing through this direction, in other words, to my right, if I'm facing this way along the curve, we're getting a nice outward flow through this path here. Let's look at our next example here. I just want to do some similar ones so you get an idea of flux and how to do these very simply. So we have the same path, right, across the circle of radius 3, counterclockwise at the origin. So 3 cosine t, 3 sine t is going to be the same in this example as well. And traveling once around means we'll be going from 0 to 2 pi. We have a different field though this time, right? Our field this time is negative y comma x. So think about what we've got. This is x and this is y in my parameterized curve here. And this is m in my vector field and this is n. So we can go ahead and find all the stuff we need. So if m is negative y on my curve here, y is 3 sine t. So negative y is negative 3 sine of t n in my vector field is x, so x is 3 cosine t. And now I'll need dy and dx, right? So dx is the same as last time. If x is 3 cosine t, then again dx is negative 3 sine t dt. And if y is 3 sine t, then dy is 3 cosine t dt. And we'll just go ahead and write our integral m dy minus n dx down, right? So our integral this time we'll still have from 0 to 2 pi. And now m dy, we have negative 3 sine t and 3 cosine t. So if I multiply those together, I actually get negative 9 sine t cosine t. And if I have n dx, then that's 3 cosine t times negative 3 sine t. That would be negative 9 sine t cosine t. But now I have a minus here, so it would actually be plus 9 sine t cosine t. And factoring out the dt from both of those, putting it at the end is like that. And I think we can see what happens we're integrating something that adds up to zero, right? So we have the integral from zero to two pi of zero dt, and that's just going to give us zero, right? So our flux is zero. Let's go ahead and look at the curve, our circle of radius three, and the vector field together. So you can see the same path, but you can see our vector field is actually rotational field. So how much is flowing out of or to the right as you are traveling around the curve? How much is flowing out of this curve? The answer is none, because any place that I am in the field, I'm simply flowing in a circle starting at that point, centered at the origin. So there is no outward flow, there's no inward flow, everything is just moving in the same direction as the curve, so there is no flux. Let's look at one more example where we have a different field, exact same path. So again, we'll say our r of t is 3 cosine t, 3 sine t. I just want to do this one more time with a different vector field and see what happens to the flux. We'll use t from 0 to 2 pi again. And so here our vector field is negative x comma negative y. So our x and y are the same. Our m and n are a bit different this time though. So if m is negative x and x is 3 cosine t, then m is negative 3 cosine t. And if n is negative y, and y is 3 sine t, then negative y is negative 3 sine t. Let's go ahead and write down our dx and dy like before. So if x is 3 cosine t, again dx is negative 3 sine t dt. And 
if y is 3 sine t, then again dy is 3 cosine t dt. So none of this stuff over here has changed in these three examples yet, right? This is changing. All right, let's go ahead and write down our integral. So integral from 0 to 2 pi m dy, we would have negative 3 cosine t times 3 cosine t dt. I'll leave the dt for the end. So we get negative 9 cosine squared t. And then n dx, I would have negative 3 sine t times another negative 3 sine t. That would be a positive 9 sine squared t. But I have a minus here, so that's minus 9 sine squared t all of that dt. You can see I have a Pythagorean identity here if I factor out negative 9, right? So I would have negative 9 times 1, also known as negative 9 if you simplify. And so if we integrate negative 9, then we just get negative 9t. And if we evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi, plugging in 2 pi multiplying by negative 9 would give us negative 18 pi and then minus zero if we plug in zero. So we'll just get negative 18 pi as our flux for this one. Now if we look at our field and our path here, you notice that we have a radial field here, but now everything's flowing toward the origin. And if you think about any point along the path here, if we're flowing this direction counterclockwise, I'm not actually having the flow going to my right. I'm having the flow go to my left as I face in that direction around the curve. Or you can see here, because this is a closed curve, we actually have inward flow, right? So because we're getting the opposite direction, but I'm actually getting the same amount of flow across the curve as I had in my first example, where we got a positive 18 pi. So you notice this flux is negative. We have the same amount of flux, but we're getting it in a different direction. It's not flow across the curve to the right, it's flow across the curve toward the left from the direction that I would be oriented. Or the inward flow here gives us negative flux. Okay, hopefully this gives you a good idea of flux. We're going to talk to you about some shortcuts for line integrals moving forward, talking about gradient fields, conservative fields, and path independence. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.